so we're either doing questions. I'm going to take my time and go through as many questions as possible. The microphone's on this time. Here it is. Um, and if you don't have questions, then you do the problems on the board. So practice. And then um, we'll just do what we can. Even on number one, I want to really clarify, I expect to see some work. So the, the work, if you saw what Skylar was trying to read on my paper, there's a significant amount of work to show here. So a simple yes, no answer is not good enough. All right, so to tell, to get all the points on a problem like this, if it's a rectangle, remember similar figures have to have congruent corresponding angles. And the sides have to be proportional. So you have to have the word similar means congruent angles. Anybody remember what corresponding means? Um, yeah, they have to be in the proper order. So the way this is organized, B and S would should be the same since T, it's hard to see that way back there. But if you look at that picture, since T is 110, it corresponds to C, which is 110. U is 70, that corresponds to D. A is 50, that corresponds to R. And so the missing angle, you would have to, they would have to be the same. Okay, we'll talk about that one in a minute. So congruent corresponding angles. And the second thing is proportional size. So answering yes and no is only the beginning of the problem. I think I got all of the angles there when I stopped writing. Let's see. Oh, I did. So those are the key things for similarity. Congruent corresponding angles and proportional size. So when you do a problem like this first one, um, I gave my copy away to Ian. So this is a scanned version. It's kind of hard to see. We know angles are all equal. So all angles equal. So yes, that part's done. But we have to compare 8 to 12. Or you could think for some of you, We've been working this way. Either way works, 8 to 18. And since this is a rectangle, this is 14 over here. You're comparing it to 12 over 14. And you're, you're asking yourself, are these congruent or proportional? Do they make congruent? Are the ratios congruent? And so even though you might know the answer in your head, on a test, you still have to justify. You have to show the teacher that you really know why. So before you do the cross product again, what, what I would recommend is simplify. You don't have a calculator. Two goes into both of these. So we're really, and two goes into both of these, right? So this becomes nine on in the denominator and four. And we're asking if that's equal to six sevenths, and of course you guys know that 4 times 7 is 28, 9 times 6 is 36, so since the sides are not proportional, this tells us the sides are not proportional. Wait, 9 times 6 is? Uh, 54, yeah. Must have been seeing a 4 there in my brain. I'll tell you, losing the voice, the brain cells are going too. Sides are not proportional. So that's why the figures are not similar. So 
Look at your paper. If you just wrote no, you lose most of the points. Okay, because to me, that's like a guess. No justification. We want to see the math justification. Noah. I just did. I saw that 8 times 1.5 is 12. And then you get 18 plus 14, I divide. I have to be able to follow your work. So you might want to show that to me before you leave. Your method doesn't sound wrong, but if it's not organized, I, I might not understand that you understand. Zay. Uh, would it be possible to go if it's a rectangle and a square or proportional or no? It, it, well, see, that's the that's really the point of the problem there, right? No. Well, well unless the rectangle is a square, they can't be, right? right? Rectangles and squares are not proportional. So that's what I'm hoping you would notice is right away you know the answer is no. But can you show the math? Good question. Skylar. It's okay if I did 8 over 12 and then 18 over 14. Yes. Remember, there's four ways to write that proportion. Nadine. Can you say it's not proportional because it's whatever point is equal to You could. Because we've just talked about that. That's right. That would be a justified answer. Now that we've talked about that, it would be a good thing to write. Okay, so on this one, we look and the angles all have to be equal because there's only one missing angle, right? And, and the, do you know how many angles, degrees are in a quadrilateral? 360, right? So, so there, they both have to add up to 360. So you know the angles are congruent. So the angles are equal. So all angles are equal. So we have to see if the sides are proportional. So what? what is that number there? It's a little hard to see. On the small one, a 3 and a 2 and a 7. OK. So we're going to check, since we're going to check 3 compares to, so here I'm going to go small figure to big figure. I want to see if this is the same as 2 to 6 and as 7 to 21. Do you see what I did? I have to check all of them. Does that make sense? So then, um, you could do cross products here. So I didn't reduce 3 ninths because in this case the numbers are so small. You don't always need to reduce, but it's handy. So that works for those two. And then I'm going to look at these here. So that's 2 times 21 is 42, right? 6 times 7 is 42. So that works. And then my third one would be this cross product, right? You see that? 3 times 21 and 9 times 7 are both 63, right? Do we have to like show like all those like You have to show. That's what I'm saying. I, I need to see that you understand the work. So, Yes, that's one way. What's the other way? Because those all reduce to what? Yeah, so the other way is if they all reduce to a third and that's easy to see, just you could also. Okay, hold on. Let me finish my sentences. It's really helpful if you do that. So there's not like two voices going on. So this is one way. I'm going to just shrink it up. That cross product method works especially well in a situation like this where you don't have equal proportions. But you could just do 3 ninths equals a third which equals 2 6, right? Which equals 7 20. They, they all equal a third. So 
know, since all of the proportions reduce to the same fraction, that's another way. You have choices. Does that make sense? Okay. Can I keep going? Okay. I just wanted to show you that because that's, I want to make sure that's clear. Do you know this little symbol here? What this little break means? Oh, does that mean that it like skips something? Yeah, it means it's not proportional because it would be really hard to draw. It would take up the whole paper. So let's let's stay focused. You guys have two choices here, right? You have those problems you can study. You can make through three choices or you can do these problems. But we're not doing side conversations. Okay, but so focus. Well, 104, if we drew it to scale compared to 8, would be really long. So sometimes you'll get a picture that has a little break. It's just saying it's it's not drawn to scale. It's just like too slightly scale. Right. Okay. So in this problem, we have a big triangle. So get used to these being separate and a small triangle. Well, you can do this on a piece of paper. You could draw two right triangles all by yourself. You don't have to trace them, right? I, I, I'm doing that to help you visualize it, but you, you could just draw two right triangles. This is 104 down here, Noah. Um, I just do a little triangle. And then use the big one, right? Yeah, that's fine too. So this is six. No, he's just saying it's, we just went like that. And then he's using the big one, right, as is. Yeah. The reason I separate them is so you guys are training your brain to see that there's a separation. So when you take a test, you're going to remember. The more I make this visual, the more you remember. That doesn't mean that you need to have an animated test going on. Right? It's just trying to help you train. Would it be a better idea to make two right, make it two right triangles? I don't think it, it is one way for one for every whole class. I think for a lot of people, two triangles is the better idea, but maybe not for everybody. So my ratio is 6 to 8 as x is to 104. I can't emphasize enough that you should be reducing x is to 104 as 6 is to 8. Remember, you don't have a calculator. That's 3 to 4, isn't it? So basically, x is to 104 as 3 is to 4. Then when you cross multiply, you get 4x equals 3 times 104. Again, I really strongly recommend that you do not multiply that out. Just divide by 4 and practice not going to big numbers. So 4 goes into 10 how many times? 4 10. 2. What's the remainder? Two, 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 right. Can't you just say like four goes into 25 times and then multiply that by four? 27 by five. How many times does four go into 24? Six, six. six, right? So three times 26, four goes into self once. Is what? What's three times 20? Three times 20 is 60. Plus 18. Okay, Sam, your question, I, I heard it, I just, I'm trying to finish one thing at a time. This is in feet. You can do division any way you want, Sam. I'm just trying to build that short division skill while you guys are in the room. Okay? Um, Olivia. So, I don't understand, I thought that was wrong, I forgot, it was before, because I don't understand why you wouldn't add 104 to the there's 104 of those clubs the entire triangle. Yeah, this is the whole thing. It's not from here to here. So on a test, will it have like those? It depends. Numbers? You have to be flexible. Sometimes it's the whole length, sometimes it's not. Yeah, you'd have to look at the picture. So there was a couple of questions. Raise your hand if you have a specific question on the front. Anything else on the front? Green. Yeah. Because yeah. I got number three right here. So number four, the tricky thing here is uh, it says the figures are similar. So you see two, right? 
but you really need to think about this one as a rotation. In other words, if I take this, this is where redrawing is, in, is really important and rotate it to see that. That value right here um, at the bottom, this is x, right? And this is 55. So you're going to compare 55 to x and 40 to 50. Okay. So 55 is to x. Instead of 40 to 50, how about 4 to 5? Wouldn't that be easier? So 5 times 55 is equal to 4x. Divide by 4. And 4 doesn't go into either one of those, so you have to grind it out. So what's 5 times 50? 250, right? Right, so 275 divided by 4 is x. And then let's practice that short division. 4 goes into 27 how many times? 6. 4 times 6 is 24, so there's a remainder of 3. How many times does 4 go into 35? 8. That's 32. What's the remainder? 3, so 3 fourths. Okay? Cool. If you had to round to the tenths place, 68.75 rounded to the tenths place is 68.8. Yeah, let's do 7. Adam? Okay. So, real quick, um, same thing on 5. Don't forget that this is a rotation here. So we have to take this here with H, F, and G, and we're going to spin it so it's aligned the same way. So G, G to F is right here. Here's my F now, right? That's why this is G. And then G to H is 3. So half the battle is getting the numbers in the right place. Do you see that? So then I'm going to do um, 3 is to 8 as x is to 15. So that gives me, yeah, 3 times 15 is equal to 8x. 8 doesn't go into either of these. So 45 over 8. 8 times 5 is 40, right? So 5, what's the remainder? So 5 and 5 eighths. You could, or you could put it in decimal form if you have your benchmark fractions. Either way. And then the y one, y compares to 8 as 8 compares to 15. So this is 64 and 15y. 15 has nothing in common with 64, but 15 goes into 60 how many times? 64, I mean. Four, and what's the remainder? Right, so four and four fifteenths. Okay. Um, Skylar might have had a little trouble reading my writing. Maybe I had a. I might. I think I had it in decimal form. I would take either. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, I'll do one more, and I'll post this with partial solutions. What was yours, Kareen? You had a question. Oh, I did. So after school, just a second, please. After school, I can stay. If you guys have a couple more questions, um, Zaid, what was seven? Okay, so this is a scale versus a model. Scale versus actual. So we know that the scale is 
three and three fourths inches represents ah, one inch represents 200 miles and we want to figure out what three and three quarters inches represent so this is a ratio portion so we have x equals 200 times three and three fourths but remember you need to make this improper so that's 15 fourths so you're just multiplying four goes into 200 how many times Come on, guys. Four goes into 100 how many times? How about four into 20? Goes five, right? So 50. And into itself once. Okay, watch. I, you missed that. I said x equals 200 times 3 and 3 fourths, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just one x, so it's just x. Yeah. So now, so we're clear on that? So x is going to be 50 times 15, isn't it? Yeah. So what's 50 times 10? And what's 50 times 5? 250, right? So 750 in the units, because it's actual, we're in miles, right? Is that better? So, boys and girls, listen up. 